There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. Melissa Service Pack 7 is now controlling transmission. Uh oh. Hello, YouTube. I am coming to you from my car again because I'm stuck here waiting for someone to get out of a doctor appointment. So I figured take advantage of this. This is excellent lighting. Okay, um, I know it looks like I'm not facing the camera because I got my phone positioned on the steering wheel. So it kind of looks like I'm looking this way and not at you. And I, I just can't seem to get it to, to focus right. But anyway, we're going to discuss an episode of Self Incorporated this time. My favorite, favorite episode of Self Incorporated. called Changes and it is about two twins Susanna and oh no I cannot think of the brother's name you know what this is so unprofessional <laughs> I'm sorry anyway at the beginning Susanna uh, she gets her period and she's embarrassed because her mom left for work and she ran out of pads and um, so she's like oh no what am I gonna do and the funny thing is um, I wish I was born in the 70s I, I was born in the 70s excuse me I was born in 77 um, I wish I was around in the 70s so I could have experienced these shows when they were new but and I feel like I missed a lot of cool things about the 70s but this is one thing that I'm glad I missed because when they show her taking a pad and putting it in her pocketbook, things like this big and she's wrapping it in a bandana and I'm like, I cannot imagine having to carry around three or four of those suckers in my pocketbook. You know, like that would take up all the space in my pocketbook because this is my pocketbook. And yeah, so that's one thing that I'm glad that I never had to deal with. Um, anyway, so Susanna, um, she has to go to the drugstore to buy these pads and she wants to go with a friend. So she asks all her friends one by one, can you come with me? Can you come with me? And they're like, no, I don't want to go. I got something to do. And, you know, so I think like they're all embarrassed and it was just understandable because I myself, I'm 42 and I don't like having to go to the store and buy them. Especially if there's a male cashier, I just, I'm like, <laughs> I don't like it. And I don't like people in line seeing, I'm gonna move my seat and I hope to God the vibration does not make my phone move. Yes, okay. Um. Anyway, I don't like the people seeing what I'm buying. So I'll like hide it. But anyway, um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought now. Darn. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So she ends up having to go herself. So her father gave her $5, I think. And $5, well, I guess $5 could get you a decent amount of pads or tampons, but she, in this case, she was buying pads. You could still get a decent amount for five bucks now in 2020. Um, especially if you go to Dollar Tree. <laughs> but anyway, um, she goes to 7-Eleven first and her brother and his friends are following her because they want her money so they can go to the arcade. Um, so when she gets to 7-Eleven, we see this um, Wild West Slurpee banner across the top of the 7-Eleven. And so I decided to Google that to see exactly what year that is from. And it is from 1975. So that tells us that this episode was recorded in 1975. Okay, 
And I actually, because I love this episode so much, I thought about going on eBay and buying a Wild West Slurpee. The phone fell. <laughs> so yeah, I edited out the part where I started cursing and like being, you know, going crazy. Anyway, I actually, because I love this episode so much, I actually thought about buying a vintage 7-Eleven Wild West Slurpee cup off of eBay. I thought about it, but I haven't. All right, my phone has fallen about six times. <laughs> There's people that are just nosy. They keep looking over here at me when they walk by my car and I wanna say something. <laughs> but okay, let's continue our discussion. After the phone falling about, oh, seven or eight times off the steering wheel, we're home now. All right, so I left off on the 7-Eleven Wild West plastic cups that they had in 1975. If I get one of them, I'm seriously thinking about ordering one on eBay. Um, if I get one, I will show it. I'm gonna put a picture of it in this video so you can see what they look like. And yeah, so let's move on. So after um, Susanna goes to 7-Eleven, she doesn't find what she's looking for in there. So she goes to um, People's Drug. You don't know that's the name of the store unless you pay attention really carefully, but when you see her walk out of the store, the bag that she's carrying, it says People's, People's, People's all over it. That's People's Drug. I googled People's Drug. They are no longer in existence. They were bought out by CVS, I think, now. So when you go into a CVS, it could have been a People's Drug where Susanna bought her pads. Another thing I noticed is that the brand of pads that she buys is modest. And I don't have it here, but I have it somewhere else. Um, I was in Dollar Tree, and it wasn't too long ago, and I saw pads in Dollar Tree, and the brand on them was modest, just like the ones like Susanna got, but they were in like plastic packaging, they weren't in a box like she got. But I've never seen that brand anywhere um, except that one time in Dollar Tree. So I guess they're still around. And so maybe in a later video, I'll have them to show you. And uh, sorry, that wasn't a very good burp. I'll show them to you. Um, so anyway, I think it's funny the way she's scared when she's in the store. So she's picking up looking at different things and then that creepy cashier or a stock boy he's like looking at her over the shelf like he thinks she's gonna shoplift or something but i don't know maybe it's because it was in the 70s that he looked creepy but with that mustache that was like this and the sideburns and he's like looking like i don't know but that would creep me out too if i as an adult and if i was shopping in a store and I'm already embarrassed because I gotta buy these things. And I see some creepy employee looking at me like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But it is cool though, at the end, when she goes to pay and he realizes that she's embarrassed and he, when he puts the stuff in the bag, he puts the newspaper over the box of the pads and, and then, you know, puts it in the bag. I, I like how he did that. That was very good. That was considerate. Um, so anyway, um, so she leaves the store and then she starts walking home and I think her brother and his friends, they corner her at the playground and they torture her and they're, you know, like, I will give us some money, you know, and she's like, no, and then it gets funny when she gets tired of them chasing her and they're throwing the bag back and forth playing monkey in the middle and then she's like oh here see if you know what to do with it you know <laughs> then they open it up and they're like oh <laughs> um 
I wish they would have elaborated a little more on that part of the show. Like, maybe they would have had the brother apologize. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Suzanne. I was a jerk. <laughs> you know? She could have said, Dad said he wanted me to bring back change. I can't give you any money. Go ask Dad. You know, but I, I feel like they kind of hurried along the end of the sh the end of this episode. They they just rushed. You know, um, I think there could have been a little more content that they could have added to it. I'm sorry, I got a pretzel in my hand. Um, but hey, you know, they did give us a lot of content, you know, for girls that, you know, need to know about those things. I think they did an excellent job with that. But anyway, um, oh, I've been searching high and low for the location of where this episode is filmed and I just cannot figure it out. I was thinking Alexandria, Virginia because it says something about, I think, no, West Virginia maybe? At the end of the episode, they mentioned something about West Virginia, so I was thinking maybe that's where it was filmed. But then I was thinking since most of these shows, like Ripples, a lot of them were filmed in Washington, D.C., so um, I had actually sat down and Googled every 7-Eleven location in Alexandria, Virginia, or was it West Virginia, looked at them on Google Maps to see if any of them resembled the 7-Eleven that Susanna walked into. Nothing. However, I did find one that was very close to what the one looks like in this episode. It was very close. And even the apartment complex that was like across from it looked like the apartment complex that was on, um, that you saw in the background when the boys were riding their bikes. But the parking lot wasn't right. And this was in um, another town, and I can't remember what the heck it was. And I was going to show it in this video, but then I'm like, you know what? It's it's not good enough because I want to give you, like, the right information, and I don't want to, you know, I, I want this to be real, okay? So if anybody recognizes that 7-Eleven, when you watch that show, if it looks familiar to you and you have any idea where that could have been filmed, please comment below and tell me because I would love to find out where that 7-Eleven is and of course the people's drug store that was in that shopping center is probably now a CVS or possibly um no I think Eckerd went out of business something Eckerd had something to do with people's drug as well I think they were owned by the same company or whatever but um if you can anybody knows please please tell me i'm dying to know because maybe one day i will take a road trip out to that 7-eleven go in buy a slurpee go into the drugstore buy a box of pads you know i was also thinking that I wanted to go to the thrift store and find a red shirt with yellow flowers on it and like a yellow shirt to go under it and then I was gonna go I'm ruining this view because this could be the subject of another um, a future YouTube video that I make you never know but what the heck I've already started telling you I was gonna get a shirt that resembled Susanna's, like the yellow one she wore under it, and the and the flower shirt. And then I was gonna go into a drugstore and have someone film it. So anyway, I was gonna go in the drugstore wearing that outfit, and um and I was gonna like have someone film it for me and and act like I was nervous, you know, and try to reenact it. I even have the music from that episode downloaded on my phone and speaking of music here is something interesting i discovered about the background music at the beginning of this episode the same music is used in another educational film made much earlier than this episode of self incorporated it's called strangers we meet and I'm going to put a clip of that at the end here. After I get done talking, I'm going to show that to you. And you can, you'll can you recognize the music right away. And then um, 
I don't know if I'm going to put in the self-incorporated clip with it, too. Oh, what the heck, I might as well. This is going to be a long video, but hey, I've come this far. I might as well keep going. We all meet new people every day, people who are strangers. Often we meet them when we're with our parents or our teachers or with other adults. But now and then we meet them when we're alone. Most of these strangers are nice people, but some of them aren't. Therefore, we have safety rules about how to act with strangers when we are so alone. you just heard the music from Strangers We Meet. Now I'm going to show you the music from the beginning of the episode, Self Incorporated, changes. And you will see it's the same song. All right, here we go. All right, so that's all I have to say and show you guys regarding this episode. Hope you enjoyed our talk. And there will be many more coming about other episodes of the wonderful educational shows made by AIT slash NIT. Um, there will be more coming very soon.